Welcome back to another Warhammer 40k video brought to you by One Mind Syndicate. I am your host Gersh One, and I'm here with my two co-hosts, the Sound Alchemist and Docile Creature. And today we're going to be talking about narrative play compared to match play. I feel that if you do narrative campaigns, it just adds an an, an, ele an element of fun that just brings that game to the next level. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on the people playing. Because, like in our play group, I feel like. Three out of four of us like the narrative aspect of it, like creating scenarios, because um, that kind of goes with like D&D. &D. You play it for the narrative instead of the whole competitive side. But then you have the, the also the opposite, where it's like you want to min-max, you want to win tournaments, and that's more of what match play is like. Although I would argue that narrative is like supreme over a uh, match, because a match you think competitive, mm -hmm. you can do a competitive game with narrative right True. um and i think you like if somebody's want if somebody wants to play a matched game they want to be competitive they have to put the narrative aside so it's like it's one of those like um with a narrative you could do both with match it's really just match like it's really just like it's a game and you're trying to win i feel what do you think i think like i, I know what you're getting at but i feel like you can still be competitive and in both scenarios and you could still try and be fluffy in both scenarios but i feel like one overcomes the other more times than not like if you go to a tournament list it's cool to see the armies and everybody's like getting the units that you know are gonna win but at the same time you can see like oh why'd you switch out your hq for this guy oh well for fluff reasons yeah. Mm, yeah. so i feel like you could still have that narrative storytelling aspect with a competitive list and even in narrative like we're we're in the beginnings of like starting our own crusade and creating lists and all that and it's sometimes it's hard to like set aside the competitiveness for me yeah. like it's like oh this is a really good unit and i know it's a really good unit but i don't want to just take it because it's really good i want it to make sense yeah and sometimes that's hard that's a hard line to walk for me at least yeah i definitely see that because right now we're about to start our own crusade armies and like crusade campaign and like I'm playing chaos, and I really want to bring a uh, demon prince. Mm -hmm. But in order to make a demon prince really good, you kind of want to go corn because you can give them like enhancements so that they could do better in close combat. But at the same time, if the rest of my list doesn't abide with like the kind of close combatiness of a corn list, then it's like, well, should I even bring that? Because that's going to take away the flavor, the narrative aspect of the list. The good thing about crusade, I think, the kind of mindset where we're at is like. We're all kind of on the same page where yeah. we're, we're kind of focusing solely on the narrative yeah. for the most part. So we're all kind of uh, taking not so bad yeah. units. And just because we like them, like you're taking... Um, Death Dread. Death Dread. I'm taking uh, Incubi or something like that. They're yeah. not good, mm -hmm. but like they're just so cool and you want to bring them. And this is like the perfect opportunity to do so. So yeah. why wouldn't you? Right. And I'm yeah. taking a net deck to Eldar winning grand tournament. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Can't um, to get swept off the table. A uh, one thing that I noticed is um when you're creating like before the games even start, we did have a list of like we want um full full painted armies, <clears throat> bases, like we wanted minimum or well, I mean we want zero gray on the table. Yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a lot of fun yes. to actually go to a game and know that everybody's army is going to be painted and know that the terrain is going to be on point. Ugh, narrative. And like, it feels yeah. more rewarding because recently I've been in a mood to paint, to just play our normal match play yeah. armies. And, that's, and that like has motivated me. But then you play your game and it's over. And it's like, oh, I played, I painted all that stuff to play one game. I can use this list again, and I probably will. Yeah. But we just played this one game, and now it's over. Mm -hmm. Where for the Crusade, it feels like a campaign. Like, I'm painting these models for a prolonged war. Or like a more than just one game, mm -hmm. and then it's over. And that's why I think narrative just has so much, um, it's so much better to play. Because you know that these models that you spent so much time to paint, this unit is going to get battle scars. It's going to get yeah. big honors, all that kind of stuff. So you do feel like, yes, it is a war zone. And these units are going through it. Mm -hmm. um, now, playing um, Crusade, we've done it in the past editions. Um, doing rules out of the book 
um, they they support it pretty well. Like Games Workshop oh, has yeah. done a really good job of supporting like narrative play. Yeah, if anything, I say Game Workshop does narrative better than match play. Yeah, that's why we see so many FAQs. We see so much minning and maxing at tournaments because the game is not structured to be that competitive or that equal. Because yeah. uh, there's a lot of like outliers. Like you're rolling dice. It's about statistics and stuff like that. However, when they you know turn the tables and they play something narratively, they really go all out and they give you the flavor. They give you um, terrain sets that you guys can like do. And at the end of the day, like there are entire campaign books for just that. Yeah. And to be fair to GW, it's there's less of a need to balance narrative, so they can just yeah. kind of put it out there mm-hmm. and then let us run with it. Where in match play, they there's more of a like a need to make sure everything's running smoothly. Otherwise, there's yeah. the competitive scene goes off the rails and everybody's upset. Yeah, look but, at the Voltan. Yeah, but yeah. but narrative, we are purposely bringing bad. Well, not purposely bringing bad units, but we're bringing units that we want to bring, even though they're bad, mm-hmm. yeah. because we just want to be narrative. And that, and like, there's no balance to that. Like, we're not. I'm not looking at your list compared to mine and saying, "Oh, do you think this is like a, an even match?" Because it's less important in narrative, so it's easier to balance because you don't really need to. Yeah, and I feel like narrative really, um, it's a different mindset than matched, mm-hmm. and it turns a person from like because we have a player that we talk about all the time who's very like min maxi and stuff so uh starting a crusade it switches like the gears in his mind to be like no you're not coming to win you're coming just to have fun Mm -hmm. um and i think that mindset fits really well with a sandboxy type of universe like Mm -hmm. warhammer 40k whereas like match play uh even like saying like i want to win it makes me frustrated because I know that like not all armies are equal. So yeah, for sure. So yeah, crusade it, or narrative play is just so much fun. And we haven't really played a ton. Like we did crusade once, but we played probably like four or five games, maybe if that. We're really lucky because we have a really tight knit group that everybody kind of like will be here Sunday. Well, not everybody, but like it seems like we get together at a, at a good time. It would be really difficult to do narrative play for a prolonged time with a group that's at a hobby shop. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's also, to that point, if we're doing matched play on Sundays, it's harder to justify, like, if only us three show up, how are we going to handle it? Like, we got to do, are we going to do 1v1, someone watches, we're going to try a 3v or 1v1. Yeah, what three for one? all, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, in Crusade, you can make anything work. Right. Because it's not beholden to the match play rules mm-hmm. yeah. so if only two of us show up or three of us are all four like you can really mix and match however you want and it works that is true remember age of sigmar when we we got into age of sigmar for a little bit there was a three-person game where somebody had control of the center or something and then they would choose to ally with who yeah, yeah. give we points like, and all that kind of stuff yeah we would like uh bribe them with command points yeah or, Something like that. that was really fun. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. I think everything Age of Sigmar that we did was mm-hmm. like 9 out of 10 times better than 40k. Do you think it's because GW, this is off topics, but do you think that GW was like, Age of Sigmar is new, people aren't really buying it, let's fuck around with rules? Uh, I don't know, because like they still, they were trying to make it work. Because yeah. when it went from like old hammer to this new age of sigmar a lot of people hated that yeah because it's like well now it's like i'm starting all over the Mm -hmm. rules are all new like this is a whole new game why did gw just do this so i feel like they were trying to make it more fun to try to bring people back and stay back Mm -hmm. and i think that's why we get a lot of like crazy things like we don't have turn orders where it's me you me you it could be i go twice in a row but then i gotta wait two turns and stuff like that and i think that is what adds that extra fun to the game and that's what something you could do it in a narrative game. Mm-hmm. You can't do it in a match game because yeah. you're just going up against, or you're you're ignoring the rules. Right. Yeah. If you're going at a match game and you have two turns back to back, you basically could win the game right there. And that's yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to say about 40k in general mm-hmm. too because there's it's just more killy. Or at least it has in previous editions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if your list is highly optimized and like you have perfect firing ranges and you're mm-hmm. hitting everything, yeah, you could table somebody in two turns if you go back to back. Or cripple them enough that you've essentially yeah. tabled them. In the future, I really hope that for our narrative campaigns, we really do play around with all these different rules and we go into it with an, an understanding that 
the goal is not to win the goal is to have fun yeah um so yes because like you guys said if you do two turns back to back in a warhammer 40k game that army wins or yeah. could very much win yeah, yeah i think my goal in this crusade is is to make as many cool moments happen as i can mm -hmm. not necessarily win, but like oh my lone surviving cabalite went up against your orc boss and killed him that would be cool <laughs> but yeah. i want stuff like that to happen that we're going to remember rather Forever. than just like oh i won the game and then we forget who won the game next week and speaking of like special instances i felt like that's something that they did back in like fifth edition more often where it's like oh the atmosphere begins raining acid everybody has a minus one to their toughness yeah. or there's a new gravity on this planet everybody moves like two inches more and i think those type of things is what makes the games more fun and like kind of unknowing is to my opinion surprises is what makes the games fun yeah. like you could have a deck where it's like every turn we draw a card and it's like something crazy happens that's yeah. how it was in uh, eighth edition when we first started playing there was a game type called maelstrom of war or something mm -hmm. and it, i think it had similar cards like you would like pull one before the game or something and it would it was like a minus one to hit acid rain or your range was like reduced by a certain amount because of fog or something yeah the fog of war yeah. thing yeah. yeah that'd be really cool do you still have that deck because we could use that for the yeah. crusade yeah well what's funny is that in 10th edition with the deck that we have they have that but like the game changing thing is usually like uh like uh, overwatch is two points uh re-rolls yeah. or mm. it's less like yeah fluffy yeah and it's more just like yeah. yeah, they don't give you a reason as to why. It's just like, it, this is what it is. And it's yeah. like, I feel like it's less game-altering, where yeah. like having all your max ranges be like 18 inches is huge for certain armies. Like mm -hmm. Combat armies love that. They can just run up the, the board like no, no problem because they're not going to get shot at for a while. Do you guys feel that in a narrative game it would be better to have those... Um, what are they called? Like those rules... Uh, be positive or because it seems like it's always it was always taking away i didn't like that i didn't like the fact that it's like i'm i'm bringing orcs but now like fog of war means i can't like i need like you know the charging isn't the same or something like that i don't like it when it takes away i like it when it adds um hmm. so it would be cool too in the future to play like okay so this is a um i don't even know what the what the narrative would be but like you get a plus one to your AP because of whatever reason or something like mm -hmm. that. I think that would be kind of cool. I feel like it's easier to give ne negatives, yeah. like lore-wise, as mm -hmm. opposed to positives. Yeah. Because like, if you're playing a campaign, it's like, well, all your weapons have been like helped by a Jakaro weaponsmith. Like, mm -hmm. how? Yeah. And yeah. if everybody has a plus one to hit to shoot, then like, what's the point of... Mm -hmm. Even having... Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, things are going to die more because more things are getting hit. Mm. But at the same time, it's like it has to fit the narrative and it can't just be something like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, has it been difficult for you guys to get into a narrative game when sometimes even like the matchup doesn't make sense? Kind of like Adeptus Custodes versus Space Marines. Yep. Yeah. So when we first started putting this uh, crusade together, like three people wanted to play Imperium, mm -hmm. including me. <laughs> and I was like... <sighs> Like, of course, you could make it make like sense of it in some way, but I didn't want my Ursa Wardens to be going against Custodes, because what are the repercussions of that? I don't know. You guys probably know more than I do, but I feel like I'd be a heretic afterwards if I <laughs> if I did that. So it's yeah. like, and I don't want that to be, and, and it's all narrative. We can make something up to make it make sense, but I wanted to have all the factions be different at the like for the most part. Or make sense why they would potentially ally in the future or be fighting each other. So for me, it's hard to yeah. wrap my head around some matchups and some alliances. And I wonder if narrative games are difficult for certain players because they either don't have enough knowledge of the lore or they look at the lore as a very like linear thing. Static. Yeah, yeah which I think because we do lore videos, we know that anything is possible in yeah there's always outliers to the main cause like yeah. for example if all three of us were playing space marine armies the bat of war did just that exactly yeah. yeah even if an army isn't going to chaos or renegade they could still kind of do things on their own and the high lord's gonna be like well we don't like that yeah bring them into compliance and so the, yeah at the end of the day depending how the campaign goes you could say that oh they ended up gaining their own um was it was the word autonomy, autonomy. Yeah. yeah 
So it's like they can still not fall to chaos and still be against the Imperium, but for how long? Mm -hmm. And the difficult part is convincing players like Docile Creature to be like, it's okay, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, they, they can fight each other. Relax. I, I also wanted to change it because, like, we're not playing Horus Heresy. Like, yeah. if I wanted to just mm -hmm. play Space, Smash My Space Marines and your Space Marines, we could just play Horus Heresy. Yeah. But So I wanted to have, like, different units on the table so we're not all showing up with our intercessors and yeah. stuff like that. Would it have been easier if it would have been, like, Firstborn against Primaris? I guess, but like, <laughs> I don't know. I want different. I want variety in my games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, I don't think that um, we can shake you and say it's okay, okay and, and then all of a sudden you're having fun. So mm -hmm. you, in a narrative game, communication is really key. So you really do have to talk to your your players and be like, hey, these are the rules, um, and and kind of vibe what they get out of it and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, because we ended up just changing it. So everybody's playing a different faction. Mm -hmm. So not all Imperium. Actually, no Imperium, right? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Potentially, yeah. yeah. Drukhari, Oryx, Chaos. And Necrons. Necrons. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, communication is key in narrative, whereas match, you don't even, you don't even need to know your partner. Mm -hmm. True. You could just show up and be like, bam, bitch. <laughs> exactly like that. <laughs> just like that. Yeah, don't even play, just bam. Bitch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bitch. One of the things about crusade is the honors and the battle scars do you think that should be something that could be used in match play for like certain command points or do you think that should kind of stay in narrative games well they kind of have that with vehicles right as vehicles lose stats they kind of they get, degrade they degrade yeah um it would be cool to have that in units but then at the same time i don't know because we've never played all five turns <laughs> So you mean like like temporarily gaining whatever the benefit for the battle honor is? Yeah, like, like let's say point? you go to turn three and you notice that, oh, my commander isn't equipped to take on monstrous creature. Let me use two command points, have a requisition from like their battle barge, send in like a special sword in isn't a drop that, pod. Isn't and that then... just like stratagems? I guess. Like, without like the, the fluff of like sending a sword down, it's like, oh, you get a plus one hit against monsters. Like... Well, it's stratagems. But the if stratagem you can goes them. away. Like, yeah. this thing would be like a game. Like, it for stays the whole for game. the Yeah. Yeah. It'd Cause be interesting. Because what's your Oath of O? What is it? Oath, oath of, of Moment. Yeah, Oath of Moment. Because, it, yeah, it's, it's what you're describing as Oath of Moment. Mm -hmm. um, but they, you can do it every. You have to pay every single turn. Mm -hmm. You're saying, like, pay the second turn and you keep it mm -hmm. for the rest of the game. That kind of thing, right? You can make it like five command points because you don't... But the thing is, you'll never get to like five because you'll probably want to use re-rolls and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but if they're like game uh, long... I guess if they're too much though, then you probably wouldn't get them until like turn three or four. Mm -hmm. So hmm. I haven't checked out the Tyranid Codex, but I wonder if that stuff is already being implemented. With it like every time... Because usually the Codex brings new rules that makes the army like competitive because mm -hmm. i think even tyranids were up to like what 57 percent or something win streak or something like that yeah it was, it was getting up there yeah so it's it increased um because they got a codex yeah so i wonder if that stuff is already there it could be but the other thing too it's like isn't that just kind of like faction or like sub themes in your army what do you yeah. mean like if you want something to be more aggressive towards like vehicles and anti-monsters oh, yeah. then just pick a different uh well, depend, like, for example, High Fleet, High Fleet yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, so I, GW does a good job of, like, throwing in narrative little things for match play, but it's up to the player to actually, like, feel that out, even though I think at the end of the day you're trying to win. So you're, you might want to play High Fleet Kraken, but if Leviathan is is where the, the victory is, then mm -hmm. you're going to play Leviathan. Yeah, and... and G Dubs has to cater to both parties, especially match play. Like some people just see these little miniatures as game pieces that they use in like a board game. Yeah. And less like getting immersed into the narrative or even like the fact that they're Tyranids at all. It's like, oh, this thing is this weapon profile. That's all it is to me. Like I don't care what the model looks like. Yeah. And they gotta cater to those people too. Those people don't have imagination. <laughs> yeah, you know. Couldn't be me. <laughs> you have a lot of imagination. So much. It's funny that it's, we're, we like narrative more than match, but we play more match than narrative. Because another, or a negative element of narrative is the work that you have to put into it. 
we already have to put in work to paint the minis, build them, do all that stuff. Now you also have to like um, have a DM basically to like create this game. So it's difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of taking the role of DM for this crusade, and I've found it's easier to craft a story than D and D because mm -hmm. it's a shorter form, and you don't have to be as like a stickler for details. Yeah. Like if we go to the mission two, I can just say you guys did this, and now we're here doing this mission, and it's less like oh you took away my player agency because yeah. that's not where we're here. We're here to like shoot each other with our little plastic soldiers. Yeah. Um, but my lack of lore knowledge. I think is what's holding me back the most. It's it's kind of tough for me because I'm like trying to think of ways to like make the mission make sense and mm -hmm. without the lore guys being like, oh, what, the the beacon can't just be put into my translator and I could figure out what it is. <laughs> I think that's definitely you though of just like being self conscious because um, if you know that the lore is super sandboxy, whatever you bring to the table, like it's gonna make sense um to a certain degree so i think that um it's difficult to play a nar narrative campaign create a story uh and then be confident i want it, it to be good yeah yeah something that we remember like years yeah ago. yeah I, I don't want it to be like oh like well there's really no point to this narrative we just basically <laughs> played five games and it was over but has that ever happened because like okay so think about the narrative campaigns that we've played in the past do you guys remember any of them like any cool no because I think, yeah, because... I don't think we played many games. And I think we didn't treat it as fluffy at the time. Yeah, I don't even remember really the story of it. Yeah. I just remember, like, we changed the fact that, like, it's easier to get scars. Yeah. yeah. And, like, all <laughs> and our armies were just I think shit. it was just you. You had <laughs> yeah. so many battle scars. Yeah, my army was just horrible. Yeah. yeah. So it requires work if you're a DM, like, for a narrative campaign. It, it's, it's work. Yeah. No earlier you mentioned how like it's harder to play because you have to think of the narrative mm -hmm. but in my opinion i feel like whenever anybody plays warhammer 40k i feel the first thing they do is create a narrative for the army they're about to start no i well ideally yes mm -hmm. but like some dudes don't even build their list until they get to the spot like they're not thinking narrative they're they're seeing it as a game that they have to win because i was thinking like before i even pick an army i at least want to know what it's about yeah. Like, oh, I'm not just going to pick, oh, this army won. I'm going to pick and get these models exactly. Yeah. It's true. like, okay, the Tau have this. Okay, but what about this world of the Tau? Oh, I don't really like that. Let me look at the Necrons and mm -hmm. this dynasty. Oh, that's pretty cool. And then you look at the units, and then you slowly start amassing that. That's yeah. how I go about it. But I feel, but yeah, I guess you are right. Some people just pick them based mm -hmm. on like what you were saying, Docile. Well, they're literally just numbers and stats, yeah. not the, uh, the story and history behind it. Or even if they choose an army based on the narrative of the faction, um, it turns out, like, it's really basic. Like, I know somebody commented and was like, my friend group is um, starting uh, Warhammer 40K, and I chose Necrons just because uh, they're zombie robots. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Necrons are not zombie robots. I mean, they are, but they're not. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's one of those things where it's like... They are. Yeah, some people, it, I guess it, the, the level of investment that you put in the lore changes um, from person to person and then from game to game. So That's why I picked Necrons back in the day. Because they're zombie robots? But, but docile, they're actually reanimating because of the living metal bodies that they had that when they cool. were... <laughs> yeah, back then, they even had a different lore. Like, they were mindless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they, they think. Yeah. Oh, not the uh, warriors. Not the warriors, no, but like the lords and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. They got yeah. personality. Yeah. Well, with that being said, guys, I think there's a lot of fun that one can have with narrative over match play. So if you've never done it, definitely agree to find some people and have a few games. It'll really uh, maybe twist the narrative on what you thought a good army could be and what it is now. But that's all we got for today. As always, it's been the Sound Alchemist here with Gershwan and Dasa Creature. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh,